Hello everyone. Welcome to the STEM out of the box MOOC Teach Meet organized by Scientix. I think this is an exciting part of our course where we can dive into STEM education through sharing and discussions. So my name is Nicoletta Livia Barbu. I'm the MOOC moderator, as uh, I'm sure you have already met me on the course Facebook group. I believe this teach meet is an occasion for teachers to meet and share their experiences and also a great way to network with other teachers. So today we have the privilege of hosting a group of eight speakers coming from different parts of the world who will present their best ideas and good practices, each of them offering insights and strategies designed to enhance our teaching and learning experiences. As you navigate through their presentations, I encourage you to engage actively, to reflect on how their ideas can be adapted to your own context, and please consider the impact they might have on your students' learning journeys. I would also like you to remember that this session is not just about listening, it is an opportunity to connect, to question, to collaborate, because we all want a richer understanding on how we can apply these approaches in our educational settings. So you can leave the comments and ideas in the chat and we will address them at the end of the session. To all the participants attending the meeting, thank you for being here. I would also like to present our speakers today, the agenda. We have Yasminka, Emanuela, Goran, Antonella, Eleni, Mariana, Anna, and Jorge. In the end, we will have a question and uh, answer session. So I pass the floor to our first speaker, Yasminka from Croatia. Hello, Yasminka. Welcome. You can Hello. take a look at the presentation now. Hello. Thank you. So today, I'm going to talk to you about my learning scenario, but before I'm Jasmika Belschak. I'm coming from Croatia. Uh, I'm also Scientix ambassador, as you can see on those first slide. Today I will present you my uh, learning scenario, the connection between geometry and magnetic force through coding of robots. Uh, those are activities uh, I uh, lead in my uh, classes for uh, last two, three years, and this year I'm repeating these uh, activities. Uh, my learning scenario uh, covers uh, three STEM subjects and one non-STEM subject, as you can see here, and it's planned for uh, like a project in total duration on 10 academic hours, but it can easily be um, adjusted to your needs. Uh, Ignit, the uh, question I ask my students is uh, how will transportation look like in the future? And uh, our final task is to discover, to invent some uh, vehicles uh, in future. Main topic is uh, to use magnetic force for those vehicles. Uh, as you can see here, uh, my learning scenario consists of uh, some uh, main activities. First is uh, regularity in nature. So I guide my students to search uh, regularity on flowers, birds, butterflies, and so on. Those way uh, they are learning about parallel and uh, per perpendicular lines. Ignore my English, I never studied English. <laughs> Uh, and uh, after all those, uh, they created maze game and exchange with their uh, peers, uh, and uh, they uh, solved those um, those games. Uh, second part of activities is uh, about geometrical shapes, uh, regular and irregular uh, geometrical shapes, uh, for example, squares. Uh, and so on, uh, and students later uh, draw the flower uh, consisted with those shapes. Uh, Third part is uh, all about triangles, and uh, during whole activities, uh, students have a introduction video about the lines, shapes, uh, triangles, 
and during all activities, uh, students uh, co uh, are coding a small robot, Ozobot, as you can see here on this video, which uh, follows uh, some line. And online, there are some codes, color codes, where a robot can go uh, around or jump left, jump uh, right, and so on. Final task uh, is called We Are Innovators. And let us see where are we now. First, uh, students created uh, those uh, drawings on the right, uh, some uh, squares and so on, uh, to learn more about code. On the left, uh, there is a second task uh, to create a maze game or some similar game. And uh, our uh, final task, it's now in progress uh, where students uh, must uh, create a vehicle in the future. On the left side, you can see flying car. These cars will be, will fly in 100 years. Uh, uh, wheels uh, uh, or tires are not uh, real tires. Uh, they are magnets. And on the right side, you can see floating boat. Uh, I must mention, uh, I'm talking about uh, small children, first and second grade seven, eight years. So uh, now students are creating those cars and boats from uh, paper. And uh, after that, uh, they will put some magnets in and see whether those uh, cars and boats can drive with use of magnetic force. If you are interested more in my learning scenario, here is the link. I will put link uh, in chat also. And uh, you can contact me on my email here. And please, uh, during this meeting, if you have time, please uh, fill some small evaluation. Thank you. That's it from me. Thank you very much. If our next speaker would like to take control, please. Okay. I'm here. So, good afternoon. My name is Manuel Leto. I'm just a little bit out of voice today. So what I want to share with you is not a, a scenario, but I want to share a methodology that I use in my classes to teach English as a second language. So my name is Emanuele, and I teach English as a second language in a small town Sicily. This is the view uh, where I teach. This is the room where I teach. This room, I call it as Intercultural Language Lab, which is, is a space that I created in my school in 2013 on the pattern of the learning setting proposed by the Future Classroom Lab with the resources that I could obtain at the time with the funds that we had at disposal. I divided this large space in an ICT lab equipped with laptops, dirty boards, printers, projectors, and a large table on the other side for group work at the realization of handmade outputs of our projects. I decided to teach English as a second language through ICT because the students can learn for a language through informatics and learn informatics as a language, which is the specific language of ICT, in particular English. Moreover, through any approach, they can learn more than English as a second language. I call this methodology MYCT, and I've been following this methodology since 2013 in my school. As you take and put to be a successful methodology in learning for languages, it can play 24 a language, and this uses it as every level, as ICT language is universally shared action based. Moreover, proper use of digital tools provides a strong increase in communication interaction among students. 
also because it is a tool students commonly use in their daily life and promotes both motivation and acquisition competences. So the main activities that I made in my room, in my lab, are based on ICT, on the use of interactive learning personalized apps, the production digital contents, and the project-based learning approach. In particular, I use it when in projects, for instance. You can see in this picture some of the activities that I do when my students with the equipment that I got. And interactivity through digital tools and personal concept is something that is very um, important for students with learning disorders and the special needs. And is a very inclusive methodology to use. These are some examples of the personalized contents that they cut to my students that I produce every day because I do not use textbooks. Uh, I don't use uh, the regular textbooks, grammar textbooks, but they use uh, particular apps that they share through uh, virtual classrooms. Um, another tools that they use uh, are maps and diagrams through digital instruments, and in particular storytelling. Storytelling, the digital storytelling is very um, uh, emotional and involving students because they can represent their own content through using their own images, their own drawings, their own voices, their own writings, and they learn to resume the contents of the lessons. These are some students during my lessons. In particular, they're using in the picture on the left, they're using the learning apps for matching the vocabularies. And instead of in the picture on the right, they are using an old instrument, which is called Dot Potatoes, which is an app which run on computers. And they're doing exercises. As you can see, the figure, the teacher is not present because this is a work they do on their own because they have to also uh, make auto correction. Um, another example uh, that I uh, give of uh, the practice they do is a training project. This project was made in 2013 and 2014. It lasted two years. It was the project on building a smart city. As you can see in the picture, we started from the training project and training platform. We used the virtual tools to plan our smart cities. The students were divided into groups. And then we realized on the other side of the room, we realized that um, the uh, model in scale based on the building of wood and cardboard. This is the picture in the middle. In order to make the um, learning of foreign languages more effective, I use digital resources to build eclair lessons because I think that learning another uh, discipline through English and uh, learning English through another discipline is very effective. And I build a lot of materials using a lot of apps, like learning apps, Kahoot quizzes, and other ones. And in particular, the topics are history, geography, science, and math. And uh, I think that that's all for now because my voice is running out. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Hello, Manuela. Everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Goran Stričević. I'm a chemistry teacher in the primary school Alexa Shantich. This is a small rural school located in northwest part of Serbia. Today, I would like to talk uh, with you about two projects. Based on my teaching experience over the years, I noticed that the two activities were remembered by students for a long time, and I would like to share them with the audience. Those projects can be observed as best practice for chemistry lessons in the 7th and 8th and eighth grade of elementary school. Those activities can make some lectures more interesting for students. First activity is making different models of organic molecules uh, from natural materials. We make atoms in organic molecules from various plant seeds. For example, we use corn, rice, sunflower, and uh, chemical bonds we present by toothpicks. We can use also matches or small pieces of wood. 
as you can see on these examples uh, here, uh, I name it old fashioned. Those are plastic models, which are standard in some schools and also some classic drawings we use in our teaching methods. But my students on the classes using natural materials like sunflower seed and rice, etc. You can see these two, two photos on the side. Also one, another example is Penten. You see what I called old fashioned way of teaching chemistry and something innovative with those seeds. Sometimes students like to use clay to make it a little bit more fun. And uh, sometimes clay can mimic some other molecules. And I would like to conclude this uh, part uh, that uh, this uh, replace standard use of plastic atom models and keep my students close to the nature. As a preparation for this activity, students need to search their homes uh, for different seeds and remember the color code we use in chemistry. For example, carbon should be something black, hydrogen should be something white. And the second activity my students like to do is separation of everyday mixtures. When we learn lessons about mixtures, and their separation, I asked my students to bring to school boiled pasta together with water, strainer, corn grits, and together with paper clips, nails, and magnet, uh, floor, sieve, corn seeds, some small stones or pebbles. And then they get a task to uh, separate those mixtures. Uh, when we speak about it, we also mentioned the homemade process of making cheese, where cheese is separated from the whey by hanging it in the small cloth. This is how it looked like in my classroom when pupils bring everything to the school. And conclusion of this second activity is that this activity clearly shows that chemistry is present in our everyday life. In animal food, in kitchen, everywhere they look around, they can see the examples of chemistry. Those activities also trigger students to think about their roots and remember the way their ancestors produce cheese and flour and other products from past. And that will be from my side. Thank you very much for the attention. Oh, thank you to you all. Can you hear me? <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Antonella Sanna. I'm a primary school teacher based in Alghero, Sardinia, Italy. Um, I would like to present uh, our Women in STEM. Um, I would like to mention my colleague, uh, Maria Nicoletta. Uh, she's listening, uh, she's attending this um, presentation. And the learning scenario um, uh, has involved 22 students, fifth grade, uh, primary uh, school, uh, uh, Sacro Cuore, so it is called the school. And uh, I was involved with my colleague, uh, Maria Nicoletta. Um, the scenario were um, uh, in, into the primary school, so all the activities were um, at school. And uh, we are, um, developed these activities from the 1st of March to the 14th of March. Uh, the 14th of March, as you know, is uh, Pig Reco Day. Uh, so, um, this is, was uh, an important day to end the activity. Um, I just want to um, show you some, um, some meaning that um, this scenario um, at, uh, at stake uh, uh, ideas. Um, we would like to, we would like to 
um, talk about gender disparity. And so uh, the aim of the scenario, pardon? Okay. Uh, the aim of the scenario was uh, to um, uh, engage students in exploration of STEM and give the opportunity to the students to uh, discover how many scientists, women in science, uh, were in history. So what uh, uh, we did during about 12 hours of activities, different activities, uh, because we uh, made activities in history, different uh, topics and different subjects were involved. But at the end of the 12 hour activity, uh, activities, uh, we uh, decided to end with a living museum. So the students, all the 22 students, but especially um, the girls, uh, decided to create a living museum and they prepared the setting of the museum at school, of course, in the, the main hall. And they dressed and act uh, like the scientists they uh, studied. And then they met the other students from the first grade to the fifth. And uh, they, um, they just present themselves as they were the scientists. Um, so how do they um, arrive at this uh, final, um, final uh, learning uh, museum? Um, so they decided to choose four scientists in STEM. Maria Montessori, as you, you know, Probably um, she was not only a pedagogist uh, and a teacher, but she was a neuropsychiatric. Uh, Ada Lovelace uh, for technology. Uh, Zaha Adid, an engineer and architect. Uh, Ipatia from Alessandria. Uh, she was an art mathematics and also um, nowadays we should say an astrophysic. Um, so students uh, did a lot of work, really. <laughs> They really did. Uh, so they wrote biographies, drew portraits, uh, wrote the info boxes, uh, creating uh, QR codes, uh, and a prompt for a chatbot. So uh, if you would like just to taste, uh, um, I will share you a um, link uh, in the chat because they did the chatbot. Uh, in um, with Mizu, I don't know if you already know this tool, and uh, we have all, also a drive space that um, uh, I couldn't put in, in the in this uh, few slides. But anyway, just uh, to try, and um, we are going to implement also this uh, these activities. But uh, the main thing is that um, act. Uh, and talk as they were the scientists. And I think this is, uh, was uh, the core of, uh, of the activity, of course. Uh, so this is part of just some shots and some photos of the Living Museum. Uh, we also uh, had a kind of totem in which there was a STEM in, a girl inside the totem that explained what was uh, STEM, so science, technology, and all the children around asked for something about science, uh, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So literally, uh, STEM in and out of the box. She's the girl that, uh, that was in to the box. And some pictures uh, from the Living Museum. So Maria Montessori, uh, Zaha Adid, and Ada Lovelace and uh, Ipatia di Alessandria. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, the link I put in the chat is in Italian, but we will implement with an English version or version of the prompt. And uh, those activities were included in the um, months of the STEM, dedicated to the STEM. So March is the month of STEM and hashtag Noi Siamo Pari, we are equal. In Italy, we have uh, this uh, hashtag to implement those activities and give uh, the opportunity to girls uh, to, um, to have an approach, a different approach to the STEM subjects. And uh, this is uh, our, our students. Uh, we would like to thank you. And uh, I would like to thank you also the 
scientists uh, um, group and community for this opportunity. Thank you very much. And I think now is Eleni's turn. Hello everyone, my name is Eleni Xiradaki and I am so happy to be here with you. I'm a kindergarten teacher for 30 years in private and public schools and I'm interested in science because my thesis was about um, astronomy, basic uh, astronomy in kindergarten. But today I'm going to share with you my experience of taking non-STEM subjects and convert them to STEM subjects. The title a science salad or a salad for science was taken after Gianni Rodari's fairy tale salad to talk about the possibility of mixing different subjects to create new developments of these to STEM approach. I'm going to show how a recipe for a cake called Vasilopita, a very well known character Popeye, a myth about goddess Athena, a traditional song, the famous spring paintings of Van Gogh, outdoor activities and problems that need solutions can be converted to STEM activities. This is my school in central Greece in the middle of Volos with 60% of Rome students so inclusion uh, and STEM activities go together. We take the five A's of inquiry based learning, Bloom's taxonomy, hot skills and the advantages of, uh, of soft skills and art into consideration before we implement STEM activities. We are going to see how computational thinking is promoted in its activity. So let's get started. These are recipes for a Vasilopita, the traditional cake on the first day of the year in Greece, with a lucky coin in it to bring prosperity to the one who finds it. Every year we make it at school, so here you see two recipes. Here we meet decomposition, algorithms, evaluation, patterns, science, coding, as well as creativity, patience, collaboration, and feelings of pleasure, joy, and surprise. Here you see all the steps. And the expansion activities uh, about sequencing and algorithms, and the B boot programming. Healthy eating habits is the reason behind the motive. Popeye, the sailor man, used to eat spinach to beat his enemy Bluto and gain his beloved olive oil. We use different kinds of activities in order to impel the children eat fruit and vegetables. Here you see the green grocers, um, uh, role playing in English and in Greek. English as a second language. Uh, literacy activities. The myth of the sacred olive tree to the city of Athens by goddess Athena was the warm up activity to deal with olive oil in a cross curricular project and promote soft skills. Such as cooperation within peers to make oil breads. Cooperation between parents to make all cookings with us. Just a moment. Here you are. Cooperation with experts that come to school to promote healthy eating habits to parents and students. Art, folk art that becomes online and offline. And an outdoor activity at the local bakery. Everything in this activity started when I heard my children singing slowly the traditional song Dilly Dilly in their free play. From the repetitive patterned song with a specific algorithm, it became a video, a song, a mass activity with sequencing, uh, online and offline, a pixel art, Three Sudoku games, collaborative and individual, and of course, programming Bboot to pass all the stages. Experiments with water led us to be creative, mix the basic color and create spiders, flowers in a neat twinning project, just blowing with a straw. 
This is how art enriched an astronomy STEM subject about day and night circle. And of course, Spring converted Van Gogh's paintings in coding activities, as you can see all the steps in this slide. We wanted to plant herbs and aromatic plants in our schoolyard, and nothing was better than a visit to a real greenhouse in the nature. Solving problems. We use maquettes to solve problems. Bob Bebot must go to the dentist. We use 3D cartons, 3D maquettes, cartons, play doh. OK, play doh to use uh, the map to find the water in our area. Google Earth to paint our road and put picture, pictures on it. And of course, copying the top view of our uh, school. And of course, using the world map to create a whole Christmas feast. Preschoolers love exploring insects and use magnifying glasses. Here we see the real ones in the museum in an outdoor activity. And later on, they implement their scientific researches and present the results. Finally, dental hygiene was successfully implemented as a cross curricular approach. The pictures speak by themselves. All um, the crafts and activities. So, thank you very much. Oh, oh my mic was off, <laughs> sorry. Uh, hello, uh, hope you can hear me now. Uh, my name is Mariana Karapetric and I'm a preschool teacher from Croatia and today I will present you uh, a workshop I conducted uh, as a guest teacher in another kindergarten in an educational group of children aged four to five. So the uh, they were already uh, in a space project. So uh, this workshop was about space. Uh, the name was Space uh, Explorers, and it was about uh, creating space machines. Uh, the aim was to encourage uh, the development of fine motor skills, creativity, innovation, teamwork, and presentational skills. So uh, as well as self-confidence, reflection, and critical thinking through the design of uh, of machines for space exploration. And at the end of the lesson, children were able to explain the capabilities of their machines. And um, they, they worked on their play presentation skills and experienced teamwork. Um, so how did the implementation go? So it was the 45 minute workshop. And uh, at the beginning, uh, we watched uh, together uh, a YouTube video about Mars rovers. Uh, and uh, then we talked about uh, what kind of machines can they imagine uh, to explore the universe. And then um, they, were do they were divided into smaller groups, uh, four to five children tops. Uh, and they had about 20 minutes to discuss uh, about their uh, machine. And uh, a box with some materials was placed uh, in front of them. Uh, and uh, the task was to explore that box. Uh, think of a machine they can create uh, and uh, use all the implemented materials uh, as well as the uh, materials from uh, boxes around uh, the, the classroom that they could or could not use uh, if necessary. Uh, in the end, um, children came up uh, with four machines for space exploration and uh, those were a rover for collecting samples, a, a machine for mapping space systems, 
uh, a machine for repairing spacecrafts and a machine for conducting electricity. So they were very uh, creative and uh, innovative. And uh, what was um, at the beginning uh, a bit of a problem is uh, collaboration and teamwork because uh, this workshop was uh, their first time uh, where they had to uh, work as a team uh, from the beginning till the end. Uh, in the end, uh, all teams um, explain their robots, their names, um, the, what are their, uh, their capabilities and what can they do. And this was uh, very good for children. They were very happy and uh, they all got the diplomas. Uh, I forgot to mention uh, that they also had to draw uh, the sketch. So it was, it was uh, the, the, the whole uh, activity. Uh, you can see some uh, some some of the uh, the the robots here. So the first uh, picture is uh, the beginning. So they had to uh, construct it from the inside uh, to out, uh, and this one is called Robbie. <laughs> Uh, so the uh, cute names. Uh, those are here are uh, all four uh, that that they uh, conducted, uh, and they were very satisfied with it. So uh, I think it was a great activity, and it implemented uh, a lot of uh, uh, STEM uh, skills. And what I wanted to mention is uh, you can uh, work on this scenario um, in primary school, and you can use uh, physics. You can involve Newton laws, or you can involve, involve uh, forces or movement, uh, or it can be also in preschool, but it has to be uh, a several uh, workshops um, in a row uh, because you can uh, upgrade this uh, in a way to uh, put um, different ways of movements uh, into these robots so children can explore uh, the, the, those things. Well, thank you for attention and I, I'll, I'll let Anna. Uh, good afternoon to all. Thank you for the honor to be here today as invited speaker and the opportunity to share my work with all of you. My name is Anna Magiosi. I'm principal of Rizario Kindergarten located in the center of Greece. I'm awarded uh, Science uh, the Global Ambassador and uh, my, pre my presentation has titled Forest as Source of Life and Health. And um, um, the subtitle is uh, Listen to the Silence of the Forest. It was about uh, an e-twinning project awarded to the National European e-twinning labels in all participant countries and characterized uh, as good practice. And also uploaded in uh, uh, World Largest Lesson uh, site as the best teaching approach for, uh, approach for the CDG 15, Life in Land. Uh, project motivation and aims. We choose um, uh, as theme uh, the forest because uh, forests uh, have a uh, um, um, lot of opportunities uh, to work with STEM subjects and is very familiar to children uh, and uh, uh, through exploration of uh, each world. Um, we can make uh, students to realize that forest is not only trees, but an entire ecosystem that plays a huge uh, role in maintaining of the ecological balance of our planet. The program aims to raise uh, awareness and educated children in order to form active citizens who will take action uh, in matters relating to the environment, realizing the usefulness of the forest and the strict relationship between nature and society, because uh, all we know that healthy forests mean better quality of life. We start uh, with brainstorm, of course, uh, through questions we investigated children knowledge about the forest and um, uh, we visit uh, the forest in cooperation with parents and um, uh, children learn what is forest in uh, the right environment, I think, the forest, because nature is natural environment and uh, gives opportunities for a lot of experiment. Um, we can make um, a lot of things in the forest and uh, as you can see 
Uh, in the next uh, slide, I have some pictures of our visit there. Uh, while developing children their creativity and critical thinking. And um, as you can see, uh, we learn about the trees, uh, we collected uh, treasures, um, uh, they explore the nature, uh, make paintings in natural environment, play games, and enjoy the excursion there, of course. Uh, forest um, inspire us and uh, we make the forest uh, through uh, four seasons and you can see forest uh, during spring, uh, uh, during autumn, uh, winter, uh, um, spring and uh, summer. We learn about forest and uh, uh, fauna and uh, flora. Uh, we talk about endangered forest animals and ch children make uh, um, a poster about this and uh, we have educational program in uh, a museum of uh, natural history and um, you can see here some of uh, the work of uh, children and of course uh, we have another education program uh, in the center of uh, environmental education of uh, our city uh, we talk about usefulness of our planet and uh, via Ginzi we make uh, this poster. Um, children may put on it uh, all their ideas about the usefulness uh, of forest for uh, our life and our planet. Uh, we invite uh, firemen to our um, school in order children learn about uh, their job and uh, uh, to explain us uh, what's written in the forest and here is the connection with STEAM careers also. We talk about uh, fire in the forest and children make paintings and we create another ebook. We call Forester in uh, our um, class and uh, we talk about uh, how we can uh, protect forest. And here is uh, our work after this visit with children's thoughts and ideas. Um, children uh, use uh, the tool of uh, computer and um, uh, painting tools um, or, uh, and make beautiful paintings and handicrafts with uh, the material that uh, we collected from uh, um, the forest. Uh, you can see the collection of our books here. We make a lot of these books. Uh, as um, uh, good uh, practice, you have to plant tree in, trees uh, to take part in the tree plantation. Um, an action uh, in collaboration with municipality and also we clean the park of our village. Not only during the project, you can do it uh, every time, you used to do it. And here I have for you, for all you, some ideas for um, extension activities. Uh, we can make poems, uh, we can um, uh, implement the coding activity or robotic activity, uh, we can dramatization a fairy tale or visit a wood factory. Um, as you can see in the next slide, uh, um, we first dramatize, dramatized. Uh, uh, the fairy tale, the little red riding hood, and then we uh, make the pista and children uh, present their uh, robotics activity. And um, we can, uh, we make um, QR codes about uh, trees, forest animals, uh, um, and a um, lot of other activities. Uh, and uh, using the pamphlet, we play games, we create puzzles, and uh, via learning gaps uh, um, and other applications using uh, children drawings only, uh, we make a lot of games, as you can see some examples for this. And of course, we have the dissemination of uh, our project uh, through a local newspaper, uh, through social uh, sites, and the exhibition in our school, and share our work to other teachers in local and wider um, uh, communities. Thank you very much. And the floor passes to Jorge. Hello, <clears throat> can you hear me? <laughs> Hello uh, to everyone. My name is uh, Jorge Rivas. I'm from Chile, South America. I'm an ICT and social skills teacher. Uh, thank you 
uh, again for the opportunity to share my experience as a speaker. I think uh, we can uh, learn about uh, this a lot. <laughs> well, I love to work with technologies and inclusion. Uh, my presentation is about STEAM, an opportunity to develop social skills in autism. I dedicated my last 10 years uh, to teach the use uh, of digital technologies and the last six years to work with autism. All of this with the help of a crew of psychologists and mental health um, professionals. Okay. Um, I work in an, an academy. This is a technological and emotional playground where kids with autism can uh, play and talk about narrow interests and create things. Uh, talk about uh, technology, video games, uh, na nature, everything they love with others. What we do with STEAM, uh, we use technologies and science in workshops for students between five and 17 years old with the diagnosis of autism. Our focus is to provide uh, fun activities uh, with the use of different technologies in, and game activities. And while the students play and learn by themselves, we also teach about emotions. And this is the complement of the STEAM we use. The collaboration, communication, and social skills, and specifically how to manage it. Why does it help them? Because we all know they focus attention on interested and achieve goals. They love to be focused on the task, the tasks they are doing. Uh, they make a place to share and talk about narrow interests. And it's a place very stimulating and emotionally supportive and a learning environment. So we all teachers know that uh, a place where it's um, emotionally supportive is good for learning. The kids are not too much uh, stress. Okay. But why technology and autism? A person could think that uh, electronic device could uh, make it make people uh, more autistic, more focused on their, themselves. But in my experience, <laughs> uh, imagine. If a parent asks their children the next question, so would you like to go to a place and talk about emotions and try to understand people? The answer uh, most of the time is no thanks. But if you ask the next son, would you like to go to a place where you can learn about build robots and design video games? Robots? Yes. So Digital technology has a high interest, interest of, uh, from kids. We use STEAM, so uh, without the A, because we need creativity in all of this um, field of learning. Uh, science, physics, we love science. <laughs> we love computer, computer devices, internet, wireless technology. We use all the time this kind of uh, devices. We need to understand programming logic, robotics, mechanics, and electronic systems. Uh, drawing, using Legos because it's the plastic they can use for create their own world. And mathematical operation for everything mentioned before. Mathematics is everything. Okay, so let's play. <laughs> they came here, they play all the time, but some Times something triggers a meltdown, an emotional uh, dysregulation. What we do next? Uh, what is a meltdown? Well, it's an intense response to an overwhelming situation. Maybe we all know some of this uh, experience in the classroom. Uh, the loss of control can be expressed verbally or physically. So we need to understand the world of emotions. So STEAM is very useful 
but we need to uh, have uh, emotional education. We have found that there are more than 500 emotions, feelings, and affective phenomena. Can you name, for example, 10 emotions? 20? This allows us to um, practice the labeling, which is accurately recognize the emotion and the emotional granularity, which is uh, recognize emotional nuances. It's not the same to be angry, to be, to be hated, or, or to be, um, um, I don't know, how, <laughs> in, in, this, in this moment. But uh, every emotion has nuances. It's not the same one to another. Here, we can make human bonds. This is very important because you can um, be an um, emotional bridge for them. They share a taste for electronics, ele technologies, and computing in this place. As they spend time together, as they uh, spend time together and achieve goals, they love to be focused on their tasks, they understand partners mode. So they start to practice collaborative uh, exercises. They recognize social norms and communicate assertiveness. It's not to say, please, could you give me that tool? Or give me that tool, OK? Um, this is very important to notice. Um, they can communicate uh, with us, with me as a teacher. Because kids, kids can share their world with us. They always, they always are thinking about everything and all the time. But sometimes there are not people that share their narrow interests or people who want to really listen to them. And kids start to believe in themselves. The most chosen workshops. Um, Dreaming, they love to share their knowledge with others through the internet. YouTubers, how to create videos, how to communicate effectively. Robots, build robots, programming, etc. Create video games, they love that. <laughs> they always came here and, and, and tell, uh, please uh, teach me how to create my first video game. This is how we do because we need to be creative in order to uh, do a good job on design video games. Here you can see pictures with the layers of the video games. A title, uh, the background, the layout, where you can program everything with algorithm and mathematics, etc. They love hacking uh, about uh, internet, how to uh, go deeper into the the, <laughs> the internet electronic circuits and well internet in general uh, plus the uh, uh, in now the new platforms like uh, chat gpt they love to understand how to do that so um, emotional education and steam allows this is a resume learning how to manage relations, recognition of emotions, simplifying making friends. This is very important for them. They are always complaining or sad because they are alone. Understanding of the digital world with others, talking about Minecraft or other video games or the streamers, etc. Enjoying life by playing and learning new things reduces the stress which also reduce meltdown and helps to detect bullying damage in case you notice uh, some of the kids present that behavior. Thank you. Thank you for, very much. <laughs> I'm going to share my link here so in case you need some information. Uh, I'd be pleased to share more about this project. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the speakers. 
um, we have seen so many great projects, projects that were, some of them were already implemented. So many STEM activities around the world, if I can say, because Jorge is from South America. And so many ideas that you can actually put into practice. So it's now your moment. So it's time for your questions. Do you have any questions for our speakers? You can write them in the chat or maybe I have a question for our speakers. Um, how, what, so, or what advice would you give um, to a teacher who is trying to integrate STEM in his or her classroom for the first time? What challenges do you think that teacher may encounter? Can I answer me to this? Of course. <laughs> because I'm kindergarten teacher, everything in kindergarten is STEAM activity. <laughs> everything. If you make cake, if you make a construction, if you make an experiment, everything is uh, a STEAM activity. So it's very easy to organize something and start. I advise all these teachers to start to do it because they learn step by step what is STEM. It's very easy to organize an activity and very easy to implement a STEM activity, but they have to have in their mind that they use all the criteria to be STEM activity. My opinion is this, for me it's very easy to do it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you. If anyone else want to share an idea, an opinion. Can I? Of course. So I would like uh, to advise our te the colleagues, teachers, uh, do not be afraid. Try. Failure is also a way of learning and uh, let students opportunity to make decisions. Uh, what activities they want to do, what tools they want to do. Uh, students are uh, great uh, in uh, researching, uh, in uh, creativity, in innovation. So don't be afraid if you don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. Thank you so much. You are right. Nobody knows uh, everything. We are here to learn and to learn from each other, to share ideas, to share impressions. Thank you so much. OK, so I want to thank you everyone for being here today with us. As we are about to close this teach meet, teach meet I want to express all my thank you to each and every one of you for contributing to this today uh, discussions. You have presented us innovative ideas. We all want to explore your ideas in our educational settings. So thank you for making this Teach Meet a great experience for all of us. Also, I would like to take this chance to remind you that you have until the uh, April the 4th at midnight to complete the peer assessment activity because this uh, is an important part of our course. OK, so please make sure you have enough time to engage with this task to ful fulfill all the requirements and get your certificate. And also. I would like to remind you or to tell you that this year the STEM discovery campaign has a great opportunity for you to share the learning journey. Um, you can share this uh, MOOC on the SDC map. So please add your participation. In this MOOC on the SDC map, you may visit the Scientix website, scientix.eu, to follow all the instructions provided there and share a brief disc, a brief reflection, sorry, or a message about your experience within this course. Of course, this is a voluntary activity, but we hope you will take part. Thank you everyone for being here and have a nice night.